uh, thank you for having me here. Thank you for having me here. And I'm, I'm uh, talking today about the uh, NGQ during the match period and its impact on the larger socialized model. Uh, first of all, who am I? I have uh, an expertise in uh, traditional corporate world analytics, uh, as well as an academic research background. And a year ago, I joined the LIDAR team, and I'm responsible for analytics there. Let me briefly introduce uh, LIDAR. What is LIDAR? Uh, LIDAR is the leading, leading Ethereum protocol uh, leading Ethereum staking protocol with more than 3 million staked ETH and more than 10.8 10 billion ETH, but uh, dollar total value locked. And our current market share is about 29%. Uh, uh, and if we're speaking about the liquid staking market share is more or less 28%. This talk is not dedicated to LIDAR. Uh, I'm here to talk about the main reasons for entry queue during the um, match period and how it will impact the staking pool organized on the socialized model. I'm going to present an approach that allows to model the beacon chain dynamics and some outcomes of my scenario analysis, and I will finish with some conclusions. So uh, let's start with uh, why should one expect an entry queue during the match period? Uh, there are at least four reasons for that, and the first one is connected with the increase in validators' rewards. Uh, currently, validators receive rewards only for performing their duties, and the merge is going to add MEV and priority fees to their validators' rewards and raise up their APR. Um, in my opinion, it will raise up to 9%, and with leverage staking, it could be even more, like 20%, rather than 4% that we have right now. And uh, increasing uh, validators APR together with the changing risk perception will cause the increased amount of uh, ETH deposits to the beacon chain, and here the second reason comes into play. The beacon chain spec limits the number of simultaneously entering validator and currently this parameter is set as five uh, validators per epoch. That means for us that the network can metabolize only 36,000 uh, ETH per day. And when the amount of ETH uh, exceeds the limit, we can see the entry queue. Since the beacon chain had been launched, there were four periods with the entry queue, and you can see here this perfect linear dynamics. And uh, I'd say that we have the entry queue even now due to our recent integration with Aave that made possible the leverage taking and raised up the APR up to, uh, up to 10%. So uh, how does that relate to LIDAR? LIDAR uses so-called socialized model. That means that all rewards and all penalties are socialized. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, all uh, rewards earned by LIDAR's active validators are being divided among existing and new users, although the queuing validators don't earn any rewards. So uh, when there is no entry queue, or there is a small one, this model works perfectly. But if a merge, uh, the merge brings an entry queue of a month or two, uh, the model could be less uh, effective. And I conducted this research to figure out to what extent our existing users could uh, lose uh, their APR or their rewards due to our socialized model, and, there w uh, and whether we should seek for some other solutions. So let me proceed with the model design. Uh, here you can see the main building blocks, uh, assumptions and constraints of the model. And I'd say that the key concept here is the difference between the momentary and long-term APR. And this difference is uh, a key point to understand 
why one can uh, experience uh, this APR deficiency. Uh, what does mean the momentary APR? Is the annualized return per validator uh, for a particular beacon chain state? I mean for a particular number of active validators on the network. While the long-term APR is the annualized return per validator during a particular period. In this case, over a one-year perspective. So let me illustrate this with an example. If you uh, activated your validator right at the genesis date, your momentary APR was more or less 20%, and it was decreasing steadily epoch by epoch with every new entering validator. But if you calculate uh, the particular amount of rewards your validator earned from the 1st of December 2020 to the 1st of December 2021, your APR will, uh, will be 8.4%. So uh, further, in our presentation, I will use the, 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 the second term of APR, I mean the, the long-term APR, because Due to this uh, con concept, you can understand the difference between APR for, um, let's say, a, a user of a staking pool organized uh, on, with an entry queue model, so when the rewards are not socialized, and our user uh, who experiences the socialized model. The model consists of two parts, and the first part is about uh, forecasting the beacon chain dynamics from now to the merge date. And here you can see three options. The first two options are based on the autoregression and linear dynamics uh, built on the last period without entry queue. And the, uh, the third option is the uh, leverage staking linear model. So I suggested that our, our integration will push the beacon chain dynamic and uh, cause the entry queue till the, till the merge date. For my research reason, the underestimation of the network growth uh, rate works better than the overestimation, so I'd go with the first one, but I also checked the, the other two, and I will uh, add some comments later. The second part of the model is uh, forecasting the beacon chain dynamics based on different parameters. So I considered three uh, different merge dates, and of course you can add the, the other dates here. I um, modeled the uh, post-merge beacon chain dynamics. Uh, in here, I suggested that uh, the growth could be stable, uh, implying that the stable, the, the constant n number of validators entering the network uh, every, every, every epoch, as well as uh, linear dynamic of the network, uh, meaning the daily limit loading. I also modeled the entry queue by size and duration. So I suggested that the entry queue uh, would um, start several weeks before the merge and would last uh, several weeks or even months later. And the last but not the least parameter here is the LIDAR daily share. I considered several options for, from 40% to 80%. So I did multiple simulations uh, combining all these parameters in order to figure out what combinations of these parameters can bring the situation where our users would lose uh, more than half percent points uh, over a one-year perspective. And I found out that the only parameter that does influence uh, the APR is the amount of ETH arriving during the merge period. And for example, for the first uh, suggested merge date, this amount of ETH should be at least 5 million 
to shift the APR uh, deficiency up to 0.5 percent points. If we consider the, the second or the third date, this amount should be even higher, like 6 and 7 million ETH uh, uh, during the merge period. To underline uh, these findings, I conducted three scenarios just, just to illustrate how it works. The first scenario is a standard one. I suggested that 3 million ETH uh, will arrive within six weeks and half of them goes to LiDAR. And in this case, uh, our existing users would experience uh, the APR deficiency no more than 0.05% points. That means 0.7% uh, compared to the, let's say, normal APR, the APR in the staking pool organized with the entry queue model. The second scenario, the harsh one, implies that uh, 5 million ETH will arrive during eight weeks and 80% of them will be LIDAR's um, share. And even in this scenario, the maximum APR deficiency for our existing users would be no more than 0.4% points. I modeled also this scenario like Genesis imitating the amount and duration of the entry queue that we had during the genesis period. And this scenario, as you can see, uh, doesn't have any notable impact. Well, to wrap that up, uh, I, I hope that I managed to develop an approach that allows to model the beacon chain dynamics in different um, scenarios using different parameters and assess the impact of the entry queue on the validator's APR. I found that the only parameter that does influence the APR efficiency for our uh, users is the amount of ETH arriving during the merge period. And I think that socialized model works well for the most probable scenarios and we don't see, I don't see any reasons to change it right now. And uh, here, for example, you can check the, the other options, the other models, uh, the other, there are the other parameters and you can be sure that all the other scenarios, all the other options provide even less APR deficiency for socialized model. So I think that we have time for questions, if we have any. Thank you very much. Thank you, Irina. Is there any question from the audience? Um, um, maybe it's uh, not directly related to the topic, but uh, since you have like a 29% share of the stakeys, that's correct, right? Um, what is the role you would play in MEV or um, what is your position on that topic? Uh, I think that uh, we are currently doing a lot of work to be prepared to the merge date and to be able to uh, participate in the MEV acquisition during the uh, validation process. So uh, I'm not the developer in the team, and I, I, I know that here there are developers from our team that now is um, responsible for that working group uh, for MEV processes. Maybe you can... Uh, discuss this um, problem with them. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, uh, as, uh, as I... Uh, as I modeled here, this uh, raise up of APR, uh, we, uh, we can see due to the MEV uh, and priority fees uh, added to the APR, uh, validators APR, and to model this parameter in my model, I based on uh, flashbots data on MEV, 
And of course, uh, here the model has kind of constrained because uh, this amount of MEV taken in, into consideration do doesn't change over time. So I base just on their data and that's it. Yeah. This is not directly related, but do you have numbers or estimations about like how much even like now when the API changes, like do people like exit Lido sometimes? Do you see, and I know they can't like withdraw, but do you see like swaps away from stake? Do you, do you look at that? Like, yeah, I'm curious, like say, uh, obviously now it's, it's, it's gonna increase directly with the merge, but say after that it, it goes down because transaction fees, you know, go lower for a few months. Like, do you have a feeling of what that relationship is or are most people just okay to put it in Lido and, and wait and, and and just have like a, even no, though it uh, might vary. <laughs> we, we provide a lot of opportunities to use DeFi widely. So it's not enough to put ETH to, to Lidus protocol and that's it. You can use, uh, I, I don't know, you can use Curve for liquidity pool. You can use uh, Aave or Maker lending platform to increase your, your, your APR. Okay, so you don't see like that yeah, users just take the token and keep it no matter the fluctuations basically because anyways they're doing something else with it? No, I don't think so. Got, got it, yeah. Thanks. This question from the Lido team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one, one question. Uh, in the beginning you outlined three scenarios of uh, the queue or the entry queue. And uh, as far as I understand you have chosen the like baseline scenario, right? Uh, this like, one? Yeah. Uh, but uh, what about like leverage staking scenario but where it continues linearly? Because right now we have, uh, we see a lot of le uh, leverage staking and I don't see why this will decrease after the merge because like that, the baseline I APR will even increase, right? So the leverage staking will become even more like, uh, like uh, yield generating. So mm -hmm. why do you think that uh, the, 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 like the queue will decrease? No, I don't think that it will decrease. Mm -hmm. So uh, here, the, the, the model is about two parts. So here you can see the forecast before the merge. And, and this is one model. And the other uh, lets, you know, lets you know what will be after the merge. Mm -hmm. And to, um, to understand the dynamics the, the post-merge dynamic, obviously, you should know what will be before. So I forecasted three scenarios, what will, will, be, uh, what will be before the merge. This is, this is all before the merge, right? Yeah, this, this is all before okay. the merge. So if you take into consideration this uh, third scenario, I mean that leverage staking linear model, you will arrive to the merge date with the higher number of validators on the network, so the APR would be lower. And the difference between the APR due to the merge will be less because of the higher number of validators. Okay, so, yeah. mm -hmm. so that is why the underestimation works well, because my goal was to find the maximum impact the on our yeah. validators. Okay, yeah. So, so uh, you can check on the model, so the, 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 there is a, a, a mode there, you can put this, this model and recalculate scenarios and you will see that uh, this number will be much uh, lower. Mm -hmm, I see, yeah, because of the yeah. like, the, less uh, total value. Uh, like yeah, more yeah total because value APR just, yeah. is inversely proportional to the number of validators on the network. Okay, I see things. Yeah. Hello. Uh, there are some projects that are in some way uh, working with interest rate, uh, trying to like to forecast in some way. Are you see some kind of sources that can imply what is the market right now are discounting of what will be the the return of the of return on this kind of asset or sorry, the return of uh, APY? Like element, element, I know that they are doing some kind of fixed, uh, uh, fixed product. You know that you can really invest in the yield. 
So I don't know if there are some sources that can be in other kind of situations being doing like a uh, market or trying to uh, in advance to to uh, speculate with that kind of yield. Uh, well, uh, I personally, I personally f think that we would go with the third scenario. So we will arrive uh, with with the higher number of validators, and then if we uh, use the merge date, not that one that I used in the calculation, but the the second or the third or something in between, we will arrive to. Uh, quite steadily dynamics of the of the network. So if if I took right your your question, you think is if if there are other sources of uh, estimating this kind of APY that could be in other places markets that are right now trying to to do this kind of prices in advance, a premium that is paying the the, the little F in order to get this yield because I, I understand when it changes the returns. They will like uh, some kind of premium the day before, I know. So my, my, maybe you're speaking about s some strategies that can yeah. provide you, uh, I, I don't know, the, the mode to switch between the products and choose our products in case of increasing APR and yeah. switch to the other one. Of course, uh, I, I think that we have a lot of integration with, with our protocol and also that integrations that uh, operate uh, in our curve pool with our liquidity pool token, and uh, I think that that strategy is, can 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 let you uh, optimize your invest investment path. Thank you. Do we have no? If not, let's thank our speaker again. Thank you.